What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh boy, oh boy. You had a ton of questions in my last video about the red Komodo 6K. So let's answer what's in this freaking box. Though before we jump into it, I'll drop some more footage because that's what matters eventually, right? Don't be scared when the way paralyzes you stay at the gate. First of all, thank you so much for the amazing feedback on my first Red Komodo uh, initial thoughts video unboxing. The response was overwhelmingly positive, so thank you so much for engaging with me and, and, and leaving your thoughts in the comments and in particular also your questions. So this video will be all about your questions that you commented in my last video. I'm trying to answer most all of them. If I don't, please yell at me in the comments below. Um, but like the last video, I'm going to start with this short disclaimer. This camera is still in beta, so the software is in beta, so there might be still some changes down the line. Keep that in mind when you watch the footage and whatever I'm going to show you in this video. But if anything changes, I will leave that in the comments below and pin it to the top so that you see if anything that I'm talking about in this video has changed over time. Uh, in case you see that in the far future. But then the other disclaimer, this will be not a scientific test with testing cards and so on and so forth, but more a real world scenario test where I'm trying to bring it to life uh, in situations that I'm encountering. So let's go. Okay, welcome to my office. It's been my office for the past half a year, but this is how we're gonna tackle this video. I will have a couple of deep dives and two rounds of rapid fire questions. You will see the chapters laid out in the play bar below, but you know, stick around for the whole ride. Which brings me to my first question and that comes from M Media and he, she, they ask, how's the file size and what compression did I use? So 
R3 decompression is a very interesting topic. The DSMC2 RED cameras uh, allowed you to pick a compression ratio from 2 to 1 to 22 to 1. But the RED Komodo is going a little bit of a different route, where you have three compression levels for R3D files between HQ, MQ and LQ. In fact, LQ is not released yet uh, on the beta software, but I'm very curious. And some other testers have tried to figure out what kind of compression ratio equivalent HQ and MQ are, and HQ they netted out might be two to one compression, while MQ is three to one to four to one. And due to these low compression ratios on the Komodo, you get a lot of beautiful data to work with, and I will blend in the recording times that you get on a 512 gigabyte CFast card on common aspect ratios, frame rates, and compression rates, as well as the ProRes equivalent, the ProRes HQ numbers, which give you about three times uh, more recording time on an equivalent space. In fact, I'm actually recording in ProRes right now. And we had another question. Simon asked specifically about the sensor crop at lower resolutions, and Yes, that certainly happens as soon as you go down to 5K, 4K, 2K. The sensor will crop in. This is just how RED works. It is a little bit of a bummer if you want to shoot 4K and 24 frames per second. But if you want to learn a little bit more about the sensor, the sensor size and the crop, you definitely want to check out Phil Holland's sensor size comparison tool. There you can see how the Komodo stacks up against any camera you have or any camera you consider buying. I will leave the link in the description below. And with that, let's go over to the studio and get into our first round of rapid fire questions. Okay, so welcome to rapid fire questions. Round one. And the first question comes from Bradley and he asks if I tried matching my Komodo with my Panasonic EVA1 and yes, Komodo, EVA1, Komodo, EVA1, Komodo, EVA1, you get the thing, <laughs> clap track. Next question comes from James Morales and Oswich70, both asking when is this camera available and what colors does it come in? Well, truth is right now Red is producing these stormtroopers, these white stormtroopers in LA hand manufacturers at Red HQ because COVID does not allow for full production at this point. The final production units will be black and there is no set date yet because it's all depending on how this whole COVID situation develops in the US. I heard dates ranging from end of August to the end of the year basically when these black production units are coming on sale. Next question from Finn. Finn, thank you. Does this camera have internal ND filters? And the answer is no. There are no internal ND filters, but you can get an EF to RF adapter that has drop-in filters, and that's what I'm using actually right now. It's working quite well. I used it heavily in the intro shots, in the intro sequence in the skate park. At the upper range or halfway through, it definitely gets a tint, so you know it's not the best by no means, but it's a little bit better than what I used before. Breakthrough Photography is actually releasing drop-in filters for this adapter specifically. Launching in September, I ordered an ND3 and a polarizer, so hopefully the quality will improve because they, they're doing really good ND filters. Next question comes from Leo Abara, Ghost Light Studio and Pump Star 125 and it's about the autofocus. Does this camera have an autofocus? And the answer is yes. This is a very first for RED. It is still I would say early on in their development. It is one of these warm and fuzzy things that Jared is talking about. It just has not priority right now. So far, I think it's absolutely usable, especially for gimbal use. But I had some challenges in low light, low contrast situations at this point. But I wouldn't be surprised if that will be fixed as Red is learning how to develop this autofocus. Hopefully things like eye and face tracking are coming, which would be absolutely amazing. And a quick side note, the autofocus and lens control just works with supported EF mount lenses. RF mount lenses will come later in future. Next question from Finn again is if I've tried stabilized EF mount lenses. Yes, I did. The Tamron 24-70 as well as this Canon 70-200 2.8 both have in 
in lens stabilization and it works. Again, RF mount lenses right now are not supported. This camera doesn't have any IBIS. I was a little bit concerned about this, but on the flip side, the global shutter really makes a difference that moving shots and even handheld uh, shots without IBIS are totally fine and digestible. And because you don't have that wobbling, stabilization and post looks so much better. Next question comes from Sky Motion Production. If I think there will be 4K 120 added later on at a later update. What I've heard is there are technical limitations to that sensor and the whole piece that uh, this is what we have to work with. Do I want 4K 120? Absolutely, even if it's just, just in ProRes, but I would be very surprised. But, you know, I, I like to be surprised. And then I got a lot of heat about one comment I made in my last video, which was that I said, those are basically the industry standard for digital cinema productions. Yes, Ari has the leg up for sure, especially for big, big, big productions. But still, I would say that red is one of these standards. But sorry, no offense. Again, Ari, industry standard. And lastly, in this round, many, many of you have requested a comparison between the Komodo and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K. Unfortunately, I don't have the camera myself, but I'm working on something dope that will bring a comparison between these two cameras to life. So it will be a dedicated video to be notified and uh, be up to date when this is going up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so yet already and smash that little bell so you get the notification when this video goes up as well as other content I upload around the Komodo. But now on to a bigger topic, dynamic range. All right, so Spycam 111, Richard Copier, Copier? and Cyrus Gomez Alcana asked uh, the same question I'm asking myself as well. What is the dynamic range of this camera? Well, that's indeed the magical question. And as you know from my previous video, the dynamic range as well as the color depth is one of the biggest reasons why I got the red camera. So what kind of dynamic range does the Komodo boast? Well, unfortunately, there is no official answer yet. The DSMC2 cameras by RED, they all have like a 16 and a half stop dynamic range. And I expect this camera to have a fairly similar kind of range, despite it having a global shutter. Unlike the folks at DxO, for example, I am by no means equipped to make any scientific experiment about the dynamic range. So we will have to wait until these guys or, and or RED puts out uh, an official spec sheet of this camera. In the meantime, for now, what I can do is show you even more footage that shows off the latitude of this sensor. And there's nothing better than a beautiful sunrise at the lake. So that's what we have to work with.
Hey, a quick update here from the editing booth. After I filmed this, a little bit more testing was done uh, by a few people and I wanted to share this update around the dynamic range with you. On one side, actually Luigi Valtellini did a dynamic range test with a chart and by the looks of it, it maps out around 15 to 16 stops and that goes very much in line with what Tim Doust also experienced with his side-by-side -side test between the Komodo Gemini and Helium camera by Red and the Komodo just like is just half a stop, stop shy of uh, the dynamic range of these DSMC2 cameras. But with that, let's continue in our story. So the next question comes from Matthew Kaltenborn. He asks, my main question is the preamp quality. I know Reds are more of a scratch audio camera, but if I wanted to run a video mic Pro Plus or lav mic into it, how would it sound? So yes, Matthew, you are right. I don't know, there's bikes coming. Well, let's do this one more time. You're right, the Komodo has actually two scratch audio microphones left and right position, and let me show you how they sound. So this is what the scratch microphones on the Komodo sound like. It's not too bad, but it's certainly still a scratch microphone that is meant to help you sync audio that you recorded separately on a, on a, on a recorder. You don't want to you know, like rely on those for any any situation where you actually need decent audio. The Komodo actually has a microphone jack built in and you can pipe in an external microphone right into the camera and in fact all the talking headshots that you've seen uh, I've been shooting outside on the Komodo were done through the uh, Sennheiser AVX ME2 lav mic so that's the audio quality you get out of it and funny that you mentioned the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus I have that microphone too and this is what it would sound like I actually have it right here give me one second but one thing you need to know is that from my initial tests this microphone import is more of a line in port uh, meaning that microphones that have a low voltage possibly don't give this camera a strong enough signal and you don't want to rely on the camera's preamps. They're not, they, they're not meant to be used like that. Luckily the Sennheiser and the Rode microphone are both having the ability to boost their signal and with that boost they're getting a strong enough uh, input to the camera that makes this setup totally usable for low profile run and gun audio setup that doesn't require you to have an additional preamp or a audio recorder that requires you to sync after the fact. So I approve, I guess. And back in the studio uh, for round two of Rapid, Rapid Fire, Fire questions. questions. So, Bonzoco asks, are there any specific red accessories that you need in order to run this camera? And the answer is, for the first time in forever, no. Uh, there are no proprietary accessories needed in order to go and get started, which is absolutely awesome and one of the reasons why I decided to get the Komodo. Red has a couple of third parties that they're recommending and approving. But other than that, you're good to go with anything you already have or can buy used or you know, like find on the cheap, like BP batteries, CFAST cards uh, and monitors. Next one up is Paulius and Peter talking and asking about the batteries. This camera is running off two BP Canon batteries and yes, they are hot swappable. You want to start with the BP 955s and up. Two of the 955s gives you three hours of juice to power this piece. Canon is currently the only certified third party, but I know that RED is certifying more and more vendors and third parties uh, for batteries as well. Also, many third party manufacturers are building rigs and adapters so that you can use and plug in V mount batteries, gold mount batteries as well. And next question again from Bunsen Co. Can you use any monitor with it? And the answer is yes, any SDI monitor, be it Atomos, small HD, anything that you have already around or you can find. And actually, there are third party monitors coming that allow you to control the camera through the monitor's touch screen. So that's what I'm waiting for to pull the trigger on the new screen because um, the Atomos ones are quite big. Both Ariel Advantage and Livio are asking about the handle that you've seen in my videos that I'm using. And that's the red Komodo outrigger handle that has a record button on it. I decided to get them specifically because of the record button because I liked 
to have it one-handed and just like one hand on the on the handle and the other hand on the lens and just go and shoot. For that handle though, you have to put $475 on the table, but the price might change, but that's what I paid for this one. And next question is from Stefano who is asking, what is my favorite lens on this camera? Well, the answer is this right now, so far what I've tested, that's the Sigma 18 to 35. 1.8 odd lens, uh, which is, I think, the best you can get for that kind of price point. It's on it right now. I shot the skate park piece fully on this lens and I, I just love it. I'm, I'm really happy with it. And MiguTube and Casey are asking about the color depth. Yes, this camera has, or the Red Code RAW format has, the 16-bit color depth that you are used to from Red cameras. I have not tested how much latitude in color you lose when you shoot in ProRes. I'm shooting in ProRes right now, but certainly a 10-bit signal, a 10-bit codec certainly has less color information in it. Uh, there is an interesting video on that note on Red's channel as well if you want to ever check it out. But I will may gonna do some specific testing on that note too. And then the post-processing and grading. This is a big one. I, this is all new to me. So I want to make a dedicated video once I feel very comfortable on grading and, and going through the full IPP2 pipeline. I will make a dedicated video to that. So. Cyrus, BLC and fireworks, it's coming. Give me a few weeks and, and then you know, like we can talk again. Again, subscribe and hit that button. And last but not least in this rapid fire round of questions, an ask that came up quite a few times was, can we have some sample footage to download? And I will leave a link in the description below. I put something tiny, tiny together so because these files are big so that you can download and try it out. Actually, an idea here from the editing booth. Let's make it a challenge. If you're playing around with the footage anyways, please upload your grade to YouTube, give it the hashtag Komodo challenge, and send me a DM, and I would love to check out what you're gonna do with this footage. Possibly we can talk about it in one of my next videos. So, with that, the next piece here is low light. Let's talk about low light. All right, so now I'm in downtown again in the middle of the night, it's 11 p.m. To answer the question, how does the Komodo fare in low light conditions? Asked by well done Akbar, just my eye, and Almud and Finn. So, so thank you so much for that question. I haven't tried it out myself, so I'm trying to find like some interesting real life scenarios how I would use the Komodo in low light situations. This camera by no means is advertised as a low light camera like the Red Gemini and it's certainly not a night vision camera like the A7S series by Sony. I'm shooting right now actually on the A7S II but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful I'm shooting on the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8 art lens wide open and um, I'm also rocking my iPad now for the first time on here. I will talk about the Wi-Fi capabilities, the menu and the app in just a second. It's dope but uh, let's, let's get some low light in first, right? for our final topic of the day. Jake had the question of how do you control this camera? Yes, you can use these buttons. There is a record button here on the side. 
most important button, I guess, on any camera is the record button. But then you have this touch screen up here and it is actually a really, really decent monitor. And you can do and control the entire camera through this monitor and I'll walk through it in a second. What's really standing out to me are two things. One, there's an app that allows you to completely control the camera. We'll touch on this as well. And then the uh, next one is as well, you can use your web browser to completely control the camera. Mind blowing, life changing. And last but not least, there will be monitors coming out in future by third parties that allow you also to control complete the camera. So that brings me to Manasvi's question, how is the menu system of this camera? So what are we seeing on our front screen? We have frame rate, we have ISO, we have iris if you don't have if you're not using a an old school russian ussr lens like i do um, that has manual iris control you have the shutter angle or shutter speed depending on what you set it up for and the white balance and in the center you see the recording time you have a preview of what the camera sees actually it is quite crisp if it's dark enough, it is good enough to actually pull focus on it. Would not recommend possibly to do this outside. When you're flying it on the gimbal and you have autofocus and you can rely on it, then it certainly works in order to help you frame the shot. Absolutely, I think it's, it's a nice little add-on if you really want to run in a very, very low profile. On the left here, you see these little indicators that tell you if the raw file is unrecoverably over or underexposed in the respective color channels. Something that you need to learn when you get used to shooting in red code raw. And on top you have basically the status bar which prominently also features the remaining record time as well as how the camera is doing in terms of temperature and if you need to do another calibration, which is something new that you have to do. The so-called black shading is something I need to get used to. If you don't wanna just use the screen to control your camera, uh, as mentioned, there is this amazing app called Red Control, which basically allows you to do anything that I've just like high level walked you through. You can do this all arguably even easier in this one app experience. You can also see what the camera sees and the latency is so ridiculously low that you pretty much can use it as a monitor itself. And I would go even so far that you can use it to actually do focus pulling. Reliability is, especially where you have a lot of Wi-Fi networks, a little bit dodgy sometimes. Again, like it's nothing super concerning, but you have some cutouts at times for, for split seconds, some delays. But other than that, I think it is actually, actually usable. And lastly, like the app itself, you can also use the web browser experience to do exactly the same things that the app and, and the camera itself can do. Actually through this IP camera connection, I turned this red Komodo into arguably one of the world's most expensive web cameras and it works like a charm. But with that, we are getting towards the end of this video. As teased, there is so much more coming. This channel for the next couple of weeks, months, will be documenting my journey, exploring, understanding, and really using this camera. I would love for you to join, so if you feel like it, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. I really love engaging with you. So if you have any questions, if you have comments, if you have corrections, if you have any ideas, please let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a good morning, have a good night, whenever and wherever you are around this beautiful planet. Bye bye. Wanna shoot more? Let's go. Shoot more. As always, shoot more.